welcome back to another episode of Clipper Shopping at the Barber Plug. I'm your host, Dre Clipper Hands, and today we have someone super special coming all the way from Kentucky. He owns the biggest barber shop in Kentucky. He is a Tune 45 educator and platform artist, as well as a YouTuber with over 100,000 subscribers. So today I bring you Sean Cuts here. What's up, bro? Good, How you bro. doing? Good, good. Good, good. How was your flight here? Not too bad. Yeah, we just got back from Phoenix, which was like four hours, so two hours is nothing. I'm super excited for you to be here to shop at the Barber Plug, man. You know I like clippers. I got about, you know, probably 75% of them, but I'm always down to look at some more, so. Yes, sir. Let's go look at them. Let's do it. Man, bro, so welcome to the store. Uh, let me know what you think. Man, I mean, you already know I like the clipper wall. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't seen, I already have basically one of these on my wall behind myself when I unbox stuff on the YouTube channel. So I've been saying I'm gonna do this thing when I finish an unboxing and like, you know, add it to the wall or whatever. But yeah, so shout out to the, the plug for the idea. What's a good to know a little bit more about you? What kind of got you into cutting hair and like started that journey? I guess I moved to Kentucky probably when I was like, nine or 10 years old, and I had a cousin who was a cosmetologist pretty soon after. So I, that's where I was getting my hair cut. So, you know, no, no shade to her, but I got some pictures that are pretty funny too. <laughs> it's what she knew, you know, right. she, her knowledge was limited. And this, we're talking 15 years ago, and I was working at B-Dubs and I had a guy I worked with that was like, yo, like, well, like you got tattoos and like, but like, you gotta, like my barber's gonna get you together. You gotta come with me. And so it was my first time going to you know, the black barber shop versus the old white man barber shop. So I never thought barbers were cool. Probably enjoyed her cutting my hair better than the old man I used to cut. They used to cut it with the vacuum clippers or whatnot. So I walk in, man, and just the vibe was different and the, the community kind of feel in there. Pretty soon after, most of my friends were like, man, bro, where are you getting your hair cut? You know, because mm -hmm. it's not anything that we knew about. Like right. We were, Half of them were going to sports clips or cosmetologists uh, at a salon, so we just didn't know this existed. So I'm, I'm getting designs in my hair and like, you know, a fade or whatever. I'm like, yeah, that's way cooler. So I end up down there taking my friends because uh, they had never been either. So it's like, yo, I want to go try them out. So I became the guy taking the guys to the barber and I just end up spending enough time down there. I was like, yo, this is, I hadn't really found what I wanted to do or any type of purpose. And I was like, yo, I could do this. Yeah, that's fire, man. Definitely barbering. I mean, as you could agree, it stretches you and in the process of learning how to cut hair, you also start to become like a new person as far as like talking to people and doing all of that. Well, I think the people around bring that, right? So many mm -hmm. different personalities and, and just knowledge from all your clients and like, how, how do you not grow when you're taking mm -hmm. all that in? So I, to go from where you started to where you are now, obviously a lot has happened, right? Cause now I see you traveling into different cities and states and teaching classes, um, specifically with Tune 45, right? How did that relationship start with Tune 45 and Basio and that whole team. They came to Kentucky and did a class one time, and so I just kept being present. You right. Know? And, and you know, you shake hands one time, we kind of remember each other, then the next time it's a little more conversation, and I can tell a funny kind of, the story of when it happened, and funny enough, we were just talking about, you sent me a picture from this CT Expo, we were both vlogging, not really 2017. doing- 2017. Yeah, not really yeah. doing anything. Um, but so, three years in a row, I got a haircut from Basio there. Um, but 2019, I had come up with my enhancement card out of a, a folder, cut it out of plastic on the folder, and I hit up one of the guys I knew from 245. I was like, yo, can I get some stickers? I got this idea, I wanna show the guys at, mm -hmm. at CT. And I bought the booth right behind 245. Wow. For my shop, we had like 20 t-shirts. So we got a booth and they're right behind us, and it was the time that the Power Mac came out, and they had way too much inventory. And they knew me, right? Cause right. I had been around, and uh, they said, hey man, uh, can we put like 200 of these Power Mats in your booth, cause you don't have, anything, you know, we didn't have anything over there. Conversation started, they asked, well, why did I get a booth? And I wanted to cut at the shows and that's kind of my, my goal to work towards. And they were like, well, you're on over here in an hour, you know, and it was scariest, one of the scariest mm. parts of my career. You know, I didn't speak at all on stage. That was the first kind of time I got to experience it, loved it. I always loved teaching people. And then I was challenged basically at, at that, after that moment, Danny, who's kind of the behind the scenes guy, the yeah. business guy, he said, well, you know, what do you want to do? I said, oh, man, I want to travel and educate. And he said, all right, we're going to Orlando next weekend. So if you show up, then you can, you can like you're in. Wow. It kind of challenged me and I was broke at the time. So it was mm -hmm. like, a, I'm not buying nothing else at CT, credit card swipe, I gotta go and I went. I'll mm -hmm. never forget sitting in the, the room with everybody when I got there feeling like I should 
not be in this room. Mm -hmm. you know? And then you guys just started mass producing the cards? Well, yeah, so I pitched it. I have pictures of me, Beam, Basio, and Jeezy mm -hmm. at 19. And I'm nobody, bro. Right, like, they right. They don't know who I am. I'm like, check this out, whatever. And uh, we got the, the compressor, we got the, mm -hmm. the no drip, the pencils. I'm like, yo, this is the, it goes with it. Like, wow. I need it. And I, I gave it to them. Mm -hmm. I said, here, y'all can have it. I, I got like 1,200 followers. Mm -hmm. No YouTube channel at the time. Y'all can have it. If you want to give me something for it, put my name on it, cool. Right. And they were, then obviously the rest of the story went with that. And they were like, no, we're, we're going to make it for you. And it'll be a 245 like endorsed, which was a crazy wow, opportunity. Wow, that's amazing. Out of nowhere. But you yeah. know, my lesson always is like, I just kept showing up. And there's multiple times my guy JT that, that's here with me. Man, we used to have a metal cage display at the booth that mm -hmm. we had to tear down. And, it, and everybody left one show and me and JT stayed in hell yeah. and they hooked us up with stuff. But opportunities, you know, sometimes it's not the fun stuff. And, uh, you know, someday you get asked to do a little yeah. bit more and then you're hosting the show and you're like, hey, well, all right. Wow, that's amazing. I'm sure that's super encouraging. It's encouraging for me, but as well for a lot of people to hear, you know, you're just putting yourself in the position and, and something came out of it. You know that's what it. I'm saying? So that was definitely dope to hear. But I don't know about you. I'm excited to get to these Clipper, Tremor and Shaver wall. So let's get to it. Of course. A special shout out to our sponsors at G&B Pro. If you done have one of these revolutionizing bags, make sure you head over to the thebarberplug.com or gnbpro.com to get one right now. So what better person to have at the Clipper wall than the Clipper guru himself? Like so obviously, it. you do a lot of YouTube, right? And you do a lot of Clipper reviews. So from your perspective, what is your favorite Clipper right now? Favorite right now, I just got the Nicolo Pro, so the blue one over there by you. That's what I've been using heavy. I actually painted the lid green. Mm -hmm. So it's my own influencer edition. I made it made it for myself. But this, this Clipper is awesome, powerful. Uh, the Boosted is definitely my like close number two. Both cut similar, similar blades and uh, open up really wide. So. Yeah. So what was your first Clipper that you got when you started cutting hair? So this will tell you kind of how long I've been cutting, but I started with a master and a corded senior. Well, corded master, corded senior. Mm -hmm. I quickly liked the senior better as soon as the cordless came out. Switched to that, and I mean, probably like eight years of my career was with one or the other, the, mm -hmm. the corded or cordless. So definitely liked that a lot when it came out. So with your YouTube uh, Clipper reviews, how has that helped you build relationships like with these brands and these companies? Yeah, so I kind of just started doing just a video here and there. I mean, you know, with YouTube, it's like you got to come up with content. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't remember what I had at the time, but say, you know, I just bought another senior. I made a video on it. Uh, and I did the Black Low Pro video and it kind of went crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's when I got a relationship. Dennis reached out and was like, hey man, you know, that video did really good. Like mm -hmm. they kind of found me through that. And that started the getting clippers from different people because, you know, it became a credible source on YouTube. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have people now that like, if I want to know about a clipper, I watch your review because it's, you know, honest and you, you use a little bit of everything. And uh, it just blew up. And now I have like, there's still more on this right. wall than mine, but it's a wall full for sure. And I know these companies are always sending you the brand new latest clippers, but is there any clippers on this wall that you don't have that you would like to take home with you? I have kind of, like I said, I have similar. So I have the senior on mine, Magic Clip. I did not get the black and gold Magic mm. Clip. So that's one I'm missing. I also need the other two colors in the low pro. So okay. I have all three. So red and yellow. I red and yellow, okay. Uh, so and I think these are coming in the mail. I got an email mm. on the way here, so. Those the are the new, chameleons, the chameleons, right? Chameleons, yeah, or maybe it's the uh, camo, the snow camo. Okay, well, we went ahead and added a black magic clip and then a red and yellow low pro, so I think we're safe to head over to the trimmer wall. All right, let's do it. So as a barber, obviously you know you need to have hitters on you at all times for the lineups, to bottom out. So for you, what do you think was the trimmer that changed the game? Well, there's no question. That's why it's in the middle. You know, when this came out, it was crazy. Similar to I, uh, cordless senior was kind of one of the first cordless heavily used mm -hmm. clippers. I don't remember what else I was using, but when this came out, it was just nuts. I think every barber in my shop had it. Like everybody bought that trimmer. To this it, may, day. it may be the most sold yeah. trimmer of all time. I don't know. So obviously with these trimmers being innovative and coming up with creative ideas to make their tools better, the prices have went up. So how do you feel about the climate of barbers prices and how they go about that? That's tough, you know. I mean, I own a barber shop. I don't know if we if we touched on that much, but you know, one thing I've always done, I opened that shop because I was held back by the shop that I was in. So one thing I told myself I would do was never hold back my barbers. You know, I discuss things with them if they, you know if they came with a crazy idea, I'm gonna do this and start doing this service for two hundred dollars. 
you know, I may talk to them and make sure they got it figured out and whatnot, but mm -hmm. I really let them operate how they want to operate. So uh, at the end of the day, I mean, if you are charging what you're charging, you got enough clients and you're doing your thing and paying your bills, I guess, you know, if you got to figure it out that works for you, that's cool. So who am I to talk about what you should be charging right. or whatever? You know, people probably think what I charge is crazy and it's my clients pay it and I'm good. So I'm not worried about it, you know? Right, I just wanted to see your perspective because I know it's a hot topic in the yeah. barber industry, but another hot topic in the uh, barber industry are these Stylecraft Instinct trimmers. <laughs> so I wanted to hear your opinion on so, those as so well. So I know you just brought it up because you know I don't like them. We, we need some <laughs> controversy. So Sabre was like my favorite for a minute, right? And Instinct comes out and like the new one blade was just crazy. It was honestly similar to, like I'll be honest, I don't think many of the Stylecraft trimmers before mm. were like, I think everybody would say like, man, the trimmers just don't hit. Like, yeah. And I don't remember what came out first. I think it was the Saber was the first one with that blade and it was crazy. Mm. Like, I'm like, whoa, these cut different. Like, yeah. <laughs> I would never put them down. And so this came out and it had that on it. And, and honestly, the Instinct trimmer compared to the Saber is more similar in, in size. Mm. The Clipper I really didn't care for. This I could use, but I got this explanation on my channel like people know this is, yeah. this is how I feel uh, but these things I'm a car guy and sometimes the the horsepower doesn't translate out to the wheels right that's what I feel like this is mm. it is buzzing so loud and angry and it, it just doesn't translate any better than this does right so I just wasn't a fan of it I think I hooked up one of my barbers with it and now it's not on the wall so. I don't know maybe we should add one to the wall just to have everything for selection but that's hard for me to say I don't know okay I, I don't know that so I maybe want it up there. maybe just for the channel so people get a feel of how they look and how, yeah. they, how they work did you want to add one to the cart yeah we can because I need to have one everything I got I got most of these other ones up there. So cool. Is there any other trimmers that you would like to break down on YouTube for your subscribers that you don't have? Uh, one I don't see it up here that I need for the wall is the black boost. I'm a huge fan of the boost. Okay. Uh, and I again, think we got those in the back. Okay. And again, I need the red and yellow. Red and low yellow pros low pros. Because I'm missing those. Okay, plug. We'll add the Babyliss Pro low pros, red and yellow. But if you're good on the trimmer wall, we can go ahead and move over to our shavers. Definitely have plenty. Let's go. So first glance, I see Sean, right? Tattooed, dripped up with the Yeezys. I'm assuming he's either a tattoo artist or a barber or something creative. So how much has being a barber affected your style and the way, you know, you dress and all that? For one, you know, I was never gonna spend money on stuff like that till I started making a little better money. So that's probably <laughs> the biggest help. I'm not like too into fashion, you know. I, you see me every day, it's some, some combination of this. Yeah. Right? So I think this career allows me to look how I look and mm -hmm. that's something I never found. So that's a proud thing to be successful, have a successful shop and, and mm -hmm. I can kind of like represent for tattooed people to get looked down on. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So with the shavers, Right, what would you say on this wall was your first shaver? Yeah, to be honest, I think I probably spent a couple years not using shavers. What? Yeah, so uh, keep in mind, I mean, I went to barber school like 12 years ago, so uh -huh. they existed, but also where I came from was like hot lather shave with a razor. Right. Uh, so so I, I can't even tell you really what the first, definitely use this maroon and gray, which at the time I'm like, why does everybody make every clipper maroon? Yeah, so obviously with the shavers right now, we have single foils, double foils. We even have ones that have handles. Out of those three options, which one would you say is your favorite? I definitely think a double foil is obviously the most common. I do like a single. I don't do a ton of razor work. I don't mm -hmm. lay a ton of people back in the chair. So taking, I got a black Uno, taking it, hitting the C cup, pulling the ear down. Yeah. You, can, you can knock that hair out around the hairline. I think it has its place, but you know, a double foil, just kind of any of these do yeah. pretty much a good job. But I see you hiding it over there behind you. I was showing you the new foil we were talking about. Oh yeah. Didn't think I would love this because I had used something like these other handles. They feel like more at home use for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so far I, I don't mind the handle. It is different. It, it kind of allows you to hold it further back where your hand's not up on the chunky part, kind of right. all up on their ear. Uh, so it kind of has its place, but FX3 is my main shaver I use. I think any of them really do. I always talk about it on the channel, like any shaver, uh, you have it. You'll be there all day using something like this. But any of these double foils, I think, do the job. Yeah. If you want wireless charging, you can go there. If you like lightweight, you can go here. Of course, the where is it at? The Babyliss Heavy Metal FX Shaver, I think, right is, is yes, yeah consistent. All of those super consistent. So you really can't go wrong with any of them. Is like there that. any shaver on this wall that that you don't have or you would like to try? I actually was looking at how these are up on the wall. They don't fit the same as those over there. So I may have to add a couple. I don't really have too many on the wall. So uh, let's do. Another FX3 because I am okay. using that currently on the station. And I'll take another Uno because those okay. things, I use them pretty heavy. So. Yeah, the FX3, I would say, is my personal favorite as yeah. well. So plug, we'll go ahead and add a Babyliss FX3 and then a Gamma Uno as well. Cool, so now that we wrapped up here at the shaver wall, we can go ahead and head to checkout and see what the damage is. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
So it was a pleasure shopping with a fellow YouTuber here at the Barber Plug. Man, I'm gonna go ahead and hand you off to Mr. Barber Plug himself. I appreciate you. Yeah, bro, definitely stay in touch because you're the one with all the subscribers, so I'm gonna need some uh, some help there. So I got you. I'm I'll, I'll share them with you, bro. Yeah, all right, yes, bro. sir. What up, Sean? What's up, bro? What's up, baby? How you living? Good, good, good. Had a good time here today. You did? Yeah, it's a nice yeah. spot. I appreciate you telling me that you reached out to me. You're not a hater. You're an innovator. <laughs> now we're the only two people with clipper walls. In the world, love, really. You know what I mean? Hey, so, it's a hot thing, too. It's a hot thing. Everybody's <laughs> trying to jump on our Yeah, way. for sure. This price, kind of hot, too. Okay. I try uh, not to go too hard, but. 1370 is, is what you're looking at. That ain't too bad. Wait, wait, wait. I like you, though. Do you know any of our ambassadors? I, I know a couple. Who's you do? Who do I need to use? I mean, but it's up to you. We'll, you use Dre, we'll use Dre's because see, yeah, you know, we was here together today. But you can't so. just use his code. Do you know the code? I do not. Ah, man. No. We got the codest. We got Wavy, Jeezy. I'll put a. Let me get that 10%. Come okay, on. I do Dre. <laughs> For you. So instead of 1370, that takes off 370. Right. You're at a straight thousand. Much better. All right. We can do that all day. Uh, and you all good to go. All right. We're going to ship that. it to you, right? You want me to send that? Yeah, that's good. I can't pack all that home. All right, that's a bad man. Thank you for coming shopping with me, brother. More uh, clipper walls for the rest of the world. I'm about the to need another one, so yeah, I know, we're going to set all it this up. Stuff coming. <laughs> all right, let's Appreciate it. it.